If you want to make more artwork with greater impact, you'll definitely want to tap into your inspiration. The good news is that there's an endless stream of it that already exists out there for you. It can sometimes feel unattainable, but with a quick mind shift, you can get into the flow. So if you avoid sitting down to get started in the first place because you're not sure what to make or what to make it about, this video is for you. In this episode, I'm going to cover eight tips on how to get inspired and in the zone when you're not feeling especially inventive. Plus, I have some empowering bonus content at the end that you won't want to miss. Hello, love. My name is Jennifer Laurel Keller. I'm an acrylic and mixed media artist and instructor, and this is the Wild at Art Show. I always say that inspiration comes from two places our inner world and our outer world. So I've decided to make two videos as part of a mini series on each side of this coin. This episode will be about getting inspired from our inner world. And in the next video, I'm going to discuss getting inspired from our outer world. If you want to be sure and catch both episodes, be sure to double check that you're subscribed and the next installment will be out soon. In this video, I'm working on a 10 by 10 inch mixed media abstract painting, which I've titled Butterfly Kisses. It's listed in my online shop and I'll link that below as always. And in this painting, I'm using some of the techniques that I'll discuss in this video. So you can follow along and see where the process takes me. When it comes to getting inspired from our inner world, I'm talking about the ideas, themes, concepts, and skills that we already know in our hearts. You might be thinking, Jennifer, that all sounds nice and all, but what the heck does that even mean? Not to worry, I'm going to break it down. This is not going to be a list of art making prompts, but more of a list about ideas about inspiration so that you can forge your own path and make more art. So grab something to take notes with. I'm going to ask you to do some self-exploration in a journal after this. So let's jump in. Okay, the first idea is what do you wish for? What are the hopes and dreams that you have for your life that you simply cannot stop thinking about? Do you want to learn French and visit Paris? Maybe you should consider a French-themed series of art. This can be a powerful way to declare to the world what you want and turn your artwork into a vision board for your future. So for me, I want to spend more time in nature, so I will paint landscapes and nature scenes. Even in this abstract painting, I'm using some imagery of butterflies and flowers, which are nature themed. I also like spirituality and being in the flow of the universe, so I'm really drawn to abstracts because they feel like the indescribable beauty and power of a source that I can't really put words to. So jot down this question, what are the hopes and dreams that you have that you can't stop thinking about? After this video, answer this in your journal with truth and honesty. And the more you can honor your truth, the more you can use this as a source of authentic inspiration. And as an added bonus, the more you give it attention, the more you will manifest your desires. Number two, what are you good at? Are you passionate about gardening? Do you crush it cooking in the kitchen? Are you really into boating or being an awesome parent to your beautiful children? Or maybe you're even a professional level Netflix binger. The things you're good at are clues about what to make art about. If you love skiing, maybe you could do a series of snowy mountains or abstracts about falling snow. If you love movies, maybe a pop culture icon series. For example, I am a great camper. I love camping. I've been doing it my whole life. I feel confident camping alone and can gather firewood, cook over a fire, set up a tent, and I have a great time doing it. So it makes sense that I like painting the forest. Again, these are clues that come up from my inner world because I'm trusting my inner compass about what I'm passionate about. Even though the subject might be about outside, 
My heart already knows that I love nature and that comes from within. So write this down and answer it after the video. What are you good at? Maybe you can turn it into a series of artwork. Number three, how do you dress? This is an interesting one. Look at your closet. What are you drawn to? This might give you clues about your favorite colors. Or if you dress a certain way for work, maybe you have one beautiful blouse that you are in love with. Pull it out of your closet, hang it up on a door or over a chair, and really look at it. What do you love about it? Is it the pattern or the style or the texture? This can give you tons of clues about your personal aesthetic. So make some notes on this after the video and see what comes up. Number four, how do you decorate your house? This is another powerful question. Look around you. Do you have a color theme in your house? Is it full of plants? Look at the textures. Do you have a modern sleek style or do you like vintage and antiques and more ornate designs? Maybe you're eclectic and like to mix and match. Look for smaller stylish items like on a bookshelf or your throw pillows. Look at patterns and the sentimentality of your inner sanctuary, your home. There are no wrong answers here. Don't second guess yourself. Just go with your gut. You can borrow any of these themes for your artwork. Okay, we're about halfway through the list, so if you're enjoying this, hit the like button and stick around for the end because there are some deeply insightful points coming up that you won't want to miss. Number five, what do you like to read? Look at your bookshelf or your Kindle or your Audible account. What topics are you passionate about? Do you read mysteries? Comedy? Self-improvement? Comics? Romance? Again, these are clues. Write down your favorite genres of literature. Does your taste in books cross over into your taste in art? If you like a good love story, how can you bring more romance into your artwork? If you like books about minimalism and tidying up, maybe you're a minimalist artist. And remember, none of this is science. It's just exploring ideas. I like minimalism, but I don't live that way all of the time. I'm not a minimalist artist but it's an avenue of consideration that I invite you to go down and listen to your heart about. Number six, look at your past. What times in your life stand out to you as the most exciting or the most aligned with your spirit? Tap into your personal history. What do these memories say about you and do you still incorporate these activities into your personal life? If not, maybe you can take a stroll down memory lane with your artwork to bring those values back into your life. I recommend journaling about it and letting those wonderful emotions come to the surface without any judgment. Be kind to yourself. You never know where they might take you. Okay, I have more tips for you, but first I have a question. I'm curious, what is coming up for you right off the bat? What materials and themes and color palettes and styles are bubbling up without having to overthink it. Those can sometimes be the best ideas, so let me know down in the comments. Number seven, look at your art supplies. If you have art supplies already, take inventory of what you own, even if it's just pencils and paper. What materials are you drawn to? Put your hand out and hold them. Your heart will feel lighter when you're holding the supplies that you should use next. Like for this piece, I felt my way through the papers and fabrics. I observed the color palette I could create with them together as a group. I felt the textures and the weight of them in my hands. And just like picking cards out of a deck, trust your inner guidance and just choose. You might know right away what you want to use, so jot it down in your notes for later and then go pick that thing up. Also, if you're interested in mixed media, my last two videos are all about what vintage materials work really well with acrylic paint and collage and where you can find the best vintage materials. So I will leave that video linked at the end of this episode in the end card. So stick around for those if you haven't seen them yet. Number eight, look at the art you've already made. Dig out some recent pieces, and if you don't have any finished pieces, look at your photos on your phone or doodles that you've done. Look them over and analyze what's working and what isn't. You might love some and you might hate some. 
Find the clues about what you should do more of and what you are certain isn't for you. What can you let go of in your practice? Are there any canvases that you could paint over the top of? Maybe you have pieces that are very different from each other. That's okay. But take some notes and ask yourself, is there a way that you can combine your styles? For instance, I like painting landscapes and I like mixed media and I like abstracts. So I recently took a long look at my pieces and decided to mix them up and start a series of mixed media abstract landscapes. And I did that for a while and then I'll go back to abstracts for a while and that's fine. Someday soon I'll go out plein air painting and do some landscapes. It's all good. But I keep having these conversations with my artwork. I ask them what they need and then I keep creating. And that's what matters. Hopefully you're getting some good ideas. I have a bonus coming up. And if you're interested in painting and mixed media, you can learn a lot in my Skillshare classes. I have all of the info for those on my website, which I always link below. I've made about 30 online classes for Skillshare, and in my review of the day, I want to share this from Patricia, who took my online class, Overcome Artist Block, and Reclaim Your Creative Power. In that class, I help you bust through the four main areas of Artist Block, and Jean says the class exceeded her expectations and went on to say, nicely done. We all get blocked at some point. This class helps one to list and sort what is important to the artist. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Patricia. This class was the first online class that I published on Skillshare, and now it's had over 300 students. And it's so good to know that it still helps people step into their power. And now for our bonus tip. I love this one. The bonus is look at you. So look at yourself in the mirror. You are beautiful. Your mind is beautiful. Your soul is beautiful. You are unique. You are valid. And you have what it takes to make great art. Whatever you don't know, you can learn how to do. So look at yourself in the mirror and love yourself. And I don't mean this in a cheesy Stuart Smalley kind of way. Resist the knee-jerk reaction to tell yourself negative put-downs. But instead, speak to yourself about your best features and how much you've accomplished in your life. I bet you've made tremendous progress and learned a ton of lessons. And this is one more step on your journey. Frida Kahlo is one of the most renowned artists from the 20th century, and she was the main subject of her paintings. She did so many self-portraits. She was also a deeply flawed human being. She had massive troubles in her life from her health and her vices to her tumultuous marriage. But what is so attractive about her work is her raw honesty. So put down your guard and look into your own eyes and witness your light shining. What comes up for you? What insights do you have for you? Even if some shadows come up, how can you bring light to them? How can you be kinder to yourself and give yourself what you need? You might hear your inner voice. It might be a whisper or it might be loud and clear. Understand that you have the answers. We're so conditioned to look to authorities to tell us what is best for us. But with art, you call the shots. The more you trust yourself and are true with yourself, the more you will find alignment with your life and also your artwork. So if you want more creative goodness, I'm gonna leave a playlist and a suggested video for you here. Thank you for watching, much love.